today we will uh, look at the application of uh, mixed potential theory and in relation to the electrochemical testing for corrosion. You carry out electrochemical test in order to determine the electrochemical kinetics of corrosion. The you, you one of the important the parameter that you might you might determine from this is um, the corrosion rate. But there are other parameters we call them as electrochemical kinetic parameters like the exchange current density, Toffel slopes and in case uh, the metal is passivating what are the passive current density, critical current density, pitting potential all these kind of stuffs that you are going to determine using electrochemical experimental technique. Now, you need to have a clarity in relating the data to the events diagram. So far, we looked at the events diagram and we looked at in fact various parameters that affect the corrosion like velocity, the effect of oxidizers the Toffel slopes of the anodic reaction, cathodic reactions, exchange current density. We all saw in a theoretical manner how they affect the corrosion rate. Now, you must have a method of determining all of them. How do you do it? It is not a very straightforward in the electrochemical technique. So, what we look at here is the electrochemical technique to determine corrosion kinetic data. Now, let us start with the so called events diagram. Let us take an example of iron corroding in hydrochloric acid. Okay. So, let us take this example of iron corroding in hydrochloric acid, it corrodes into uh, ferrous chloride then hydrogen is evolved. We need to look at the corrosion kinetics of that. Now, for this you can write events diagram right. How many equilibria you have in this to start with? 2. One is hydrogen gas is in equilibrium with uh, hydrogen ions. The second is iron is in equilibrium with F 2 plus ions there are two equilibria right. And you have corresponding exchange current density, Toffel slopes, equilibrium potential these factors. So, let us represent here in the diagram ok. So, you have a potential here, the log current, current density rather and you can represent the two equilibria that you have.
right and this corresponds to what hydrogen going as H plus plus electrons. Here H plus combines with electron forms hydrogen gas right. What is this, this one? Iron going as Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons and here the cathodic reaction Fe2 plus plus 2 electron gives you iron here and this is the equilibrium potential for hydrogen and this is the equilibrium potential for iron in equilibrium with F2 plus. Now, we all know in this case right this is your I car and this is your E car. In the corrosion reaction here what are the governing uh, governing relationship that, that, that affects the corrosion rate? This particular kinetic, this particular kinetics, this does not really affect at all, this does not really affect at all, they do not affect. Do they affect? They do not really affect at all. Now, I need to determine the toppled slopes the exchange condensity, the Tafel flow, the exchange condensity I need to determine. Of course, I need to determine of course the I car and the E car value. To start with, let us look at a simple system ok. I just draw schematically. Suppose I have uh, you know represent this corrosion process using this this schematic diagram. So, this is hydrochloric acid, it is getting corroded, simplicity it is deaerated right. If I measure the potential of this one when it is corroding using a, a voltmeter or electrometer and using a reference electrode. What will be that potential called? Yeah. Use, use this diagram, look at this diagram and tell me. In this case, which is this is called as the corrosion potential. I can measure the corrosion potential much easily using a reference electrode and in electrometer. I want to also determine the I car value. Can I measure here? I cannot measure here directly because no current is coming out of this metal now. Why? The rate of iron oxidation is equal to the rate of reduction of H plus ions. The electrons liberated on the surface is consumed by the H plus ions. The no electrons they go out of the system. Now, the current moves into the system. So, you cannot measure the I core value directly in here though I can measure E core value. You all with me? I cannot use an ammeter right. If you use ammeter what happens? Current does not flow out of this corroding system because the rate of oxidation here is equal to rate of reduction here at all. Or if I measure using ammeter, suppose I measure using ammeter, ok, some means what will be the current there? The current will be 0, am I right? The current will be 0, I cannot measure any current, right. So, at E core value, the measurable current that is going out of this system is 0. Can I say that? So, that is the current. So, I, I just represent in this diagram what is the 
corresponding current. The corresponding current at E car is 0 here. Agreed? Right? Now, what I am going to do is now I am going to now apply a potential on this, right? I apply a potential on this. How do I apply a potential? I use in another electrode here, okay. And this is, is going to be, let us say, a platinum electrode. Now, I am going to apply using, I use maybe a, a potential stand or whatever, I can use a potential stand. I will talk about what a potential stand is later. So, what I am going to do is now I am going to change this potential of this electrode. I am going to now move from here towards a positive direction. Suppose I move towards like this, suppose I move to let us say this potential. I moved from here to this particular potential I moved. Now, please look at this Evans diagram. What is the current that is corresponding to reduction? This is the reduction current and this is going to be your oxidation current. So, iron is getting oxidized more than hydrogen is getting reduced are you following me or not right. That means, there is going to be net flow of current in the system am I right or not. That means, if I want to rise it what happens now in this case now the ion is dissolving the electrons move out of the system like this electrons move out and the current starts flowing like this. Now, I am going to use an ammeter use an ammeter now here the ammeter start measuring the current. What will be the current coming here? the current coming will be the difference between this current and this current right. For example, the ion is getting dissolved at this rate, hydrogen is getting reduced this rate, only the remaining electrons go out of the system right agreed. So, the current will be between these two points ok, it is not going to be exactly like this. So, I subtract this current from this current ok. So, what happens now? you find that at this particular place the current is going somewhere here ok. The current starts increasing like that. Now, what I want to do? I want to raise the potential further. I want to raise it to this particular place. I want to move this to another potential here. What happens? In this case, the rate of oxidation increases even more and the rate of reduction is, is now decreasing. Am I right or not? So, this current will be very close to this. Now, I come here, this come very close to this because this current is less, this is very high ok. Now, what happens now? Now, this current will start going close to this, it should be here actually ok, it should be here ok. Now, again if I if I again extend this further, what happens, what happens now? Extend it further, this curve will go and get merged with this. because the reduction current is very small, the oxidation current is more overall the current corresponds to oxidation current agreed or not. So, that means, this curve will go and almost start merging with this and go like this. Of course, here what happens there is going to be one more oxidation things will start moving you know, differently. So, up to this point you will find ok, you find that this curve is going to be 
merging with this staffel line. Is it merging with my staff line or not? It is merging with this staffel line here. Agreed? Anybody has any question? Yes. Suppose I okay, I will come to that point later what happens when decrease the potential, right? Now, what happens now? At least you have you agreed, have you have you understood the have you understood this behavior of potential current relationship that it is initially 0 it increases it goes like this and at this point of time it is just following the Tafel behavior. Here is not following the Tafel behavior not behind the Tafel behavior and it starts behind the Tafel behavior here is it ok understood right. So, you ask the question what happens? when I am going to bring the potential down in relation to E car right. When I bring it down what happens now? When I bring it down let us say to I am going to bring it down to this particular potential. The anodic reaction is, is rate is less and the cathodic reaction rate is going to be more agreed ok. But again what happens? There is a net current the net current is going to lie somewhere here only. So, what happens now? This guy will start following simply like this ok. So, I would get I would I would obtain you know the points will lie along this I am reversing it. So, that it will become easy for you to, to understand ok. So, this is what you will get in an actual experiment. In an actual experiment you carry out in the laboratory, you measure E car first, you move from E car either way, you can move either towards cathodically first and then you can start moving anodically later. You will able to get this, this, this particular plot, you get this particular plot here. So, this is how things will look like in all your experiments in all of your experiments now. And you using this you should able to now reconstruct the diagram now ok. So, if I have this 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 uh, this polarization curve this polarization curve how do I get uh, how do I get um, I car how do I get it simple right. You draw a tangent right you are where do you draw a tangent do you draw a tangent here. No, you draw a tangent here because it forms a Tafel equation. The Tafel behavior is coming here, the Tafel behavior is not here, the Tafel behavior is not here. So, you draw a tangent from here, tangent from here and extrapolate the tangent, the intersection point gives you what is called as log i car. The intersection point ideally will give you the corrosion potential e car, agreed? Agreed or not agreed? Now, I want to get the exchange current density, right? How do I get exchange current density? I want to get exchange current density for hydrogen H plus equilibrium, right? How do I get it? I have I have only this line, and I have only this line. How do I get how do I get exchange current density? ok can you can you identify which is the which is the exchange current density in this in this event diagram where is it this one right. So, this corresponds to exchange current density h plus h and this corresponds to i naught f u 2 plus and f u ok. So, how do I how do I get this exchange current density? It should be much easier, right? Is, this, is anybody's guess? Equilibrium is known, we can yeah, so you need to calculate the equilibrium and extrapolate the tangent to the equilibrium potentials. I mean, why are you assistant, right? I mean, you should not be assistant at this stage. You extrapolate to that particular place, you get exchange current density, and you get exchange current density. So, how do I calculate the equilibrium potential? Is there a way to calculate? Come quick. Suppose I say iron is here in the solution, and I, I, you know, in hydrochloric acid, and I say that the 
ferrous ion concentration is 10 power minus 6 moles. Now, you tell me is there a way to calculate the the equilibrium potential? Can you, can you not? Quick, huh? Can you how? Nernst equation, right? So, you can use the Nernst equation and calculate this and you will able to get the equilibrium potentials. Then you can able to get exchange current density, you can get all these values. Why are this important? It is important because the exchange current density decides what should be the corrosion rate. Of course, you have table slopes, you have other factors. So, you, you can determine that you will see over a time period how we use this to design a new alloy system. You want a less exchange current density. For example, if, if I move assume that the table slope is same right. If I lower exchange current density what will happen to corrosion rate? The table slope is same, the equilibrium potential is same. If I lower the exchange current density for this, so what will happen to I car value? Quick it will decrease right. So, these, these are the things that that is what I meant the mechanisms of corrosion in this case. So, it is possible for us to determine all the electrochemical parameters using the, the so called the polarization diagram ok. So, this is a an important thing and you might have done already I suppose uh, this experiment if not you might be doing this very shortly. And in this case you will only get you will get only the these lines get only these lines you are not going to get this is not possible why the moment you immerse steel in a, in a hydrochloric acid you are not having any more equilibrium here you are not going to have any more equilibrium here. In fact, this this half of it this part of it you are never able to get at all you will only get only this part of it right you will only get this part of it and you extrapolate and you can get the the electrochemical parameters understood ok. Now, let us go a little further into it ok and try to use the so called butler volmer equation and try to understand why does it really happen ok. I am going to now uh, you know uh, write uh, briefly what the butler volmer equation is. Now, we have seen now the current that is flowing in a system I current I measured I measured is equal to I anodic minus I cathodic. Please understand current as a sign, so as a potential it is not independent ok. Cathodic current is generally negative and anodic current is generally positive because why in anodic current what happens in anodic current. Why, why does it so why does you call this anodic current you take a metal right you take a metal there and when it dissolves the assume in the case of iron right I have a electrode here iron dissolves as Fe 2 plus. The current moves away from it when H ok whereas when H plus is getting reduced the current moves in the counter directions. So, the current flow at the interface is different this anodic current or a cathodic current ok. So, the net current is given as anodic current minus the cathodic current that is the convention. We have seen earlier ok the so called Butler Volmer equation where I which is measured normally given as what is related to anybody? Still remember I naught exponential what exponential 1 minus alpha right and um, n number of uh, electrons right and f ok and uh, divided by R t into what into uh, E applied minus E 
equilibrium right minus exponential minus alpha n f or t by e applied minus e equilibrium okay we can use this bracket here huh? and the first one what is this this is your anodic and this is your cathodic you can go back to your nodes and check now in in over here i am going to now put back this the bartholomew equation talks about this and talks about this and talks about this i am going to apply this to corrosion also okay corrosion is not equilibrium but still you can apply this so i am going to apply to this this particular line here this particular line here the same bartholomew equation okay how to do that i slightly change this into this equation slightly change as i applied is equal to i car exponential 1 minus alpha n f by rt e applied minus e car okay minus exponential minus alpha n f I do this. What I have done here instead of equilibrium potential, I made as E car, instead of exchange current density, I made as I car. So, from there only I am deviating, right? I am deviating from there, right? So, I have moved from here to this for a this is for a corrosion system. So, this is for corroding system. Now, you tell me What does this correspond to? Yeah. Is it is inverse of tabular slope or t by alpha n of is tabular slope, it is the inverse of tabular slope, right? So, I write this equation um, like this I is equal to I car right exponential what is that E applied minus E car by beta A minus exponential E applied minus E car can I say this or not got it. Let us now look at this equation I hope you guys are following right let us look at this equation ok. Now, look at this condition 1 
okay e applied minus e car is positive and large let's say very large okay large quite large okay quite large so what lambda equation look at your equation tell me what happens hey, i think i made a mistake here huh? please go back to this go back to this equation yeah see there's a mistake here please correct it huh? i equal to i car exponential e app uh, minus e car beta minus exponential of minus yeah okay please look at that huh? please make this change so having this let us go to the condition 1 okay in condition 1 e applied minus e car is positive and quite large so what will happen to this equation the equation will be equal to i is equal to i car what happens exponential e applied minus e car by beta a understood condition 2 E applied minus E car is negative and very large. Okay, what happens to I car? I equal to I equal to what? I equal to I car what happens minus exponential minus Okay. So, this is a very interesting thing what is uh, what, what can you say about see you can also say E applied minus E car can be considered as over voltage here you know in a sense of over voltage I do not want to call in that true sense it is, it is over voltage in, in, in a different sense of that ok deviation from E car actually. So, this is what is this relation called anybody this is called a Tafel equation this is called a Tafel equation right. So, go back to this diagram go back to this diagram or so this is the Tafel uh, equation this is Tafel 1. So, that means if I if I represent this go back to the go back to the I am going to make a small diagram here I versus E ok. Like this, this is your experimental data right, this is your experimental data please go back and see your diagram. I am not giving the events diagram completely, but these are the measured values. Now, equation 1 and the equation 2, equation 1 is applied here, right. 
equation 2 agreed and is not valid here not valid here that means where do I extrapolate I extrapolate from this point to this continuously and I extrapolate from here and get this if I do any extrapolation in these regions that becomes wrong because it is not valid equation understood not understood ok. So, that is why when you carry out an experiment you normally get E versus log i curves and in order to get i core value you make a Tafel extrapolation when when is the condition the condition is E applied minus E car is large please look at this E applied minus E car is large and negative you get this here. So, it has to be higher value then only you can able to extrapolate and get this things here ok. So, you can extrapolate and you can extrapolate and you can get E car and I cars ok. So, any other place extrapolation is incorrect you must clear your doubts here if you are not you are going to have perennial problem in understanding polarization curves. Anybody has any questions do not be hesitant you just tell me I am ready to spend some more time and make it clear to you that what it really means. So, do not draw a tangent anywhere you want you should draw a tangent where the over voltage is is higher ok because that is where the tafel tafel relation is valid other places it is not really valid ok. That is the important thing in you should keep in mind. Now, the question now that comes is how much you can do that ok, how much that you can do let us look at some complications here ok. Okay. Now, it goes something like that now it goes like this can you do this here can you do it here you cannot do because very likely they are diffusion controlled. In some cases, large IR drop. I am not going to talk about right now the IR drop and let us not worry about right now. So, you cannot do either at too large a need a value because the table equation is not valid anymore. So, it is valid. So, you should look at in which region the TAFL equation is valid and you should make an extrapolation that is a very important thing getting the electrochemical kinetics of corrosion ok. So, I think this should you should keep in mind when you talk about hmm, when you talk about ok problems in TAFL extrapolation. So, it is not that simple I mean you have to be you have to know what is going on if you do not know what is going on in the system you simply cannot use this plots to extrapolate the way you need need to do that ok yeah yeah right now we will not talk about it uh, and it is you know it is going to take uh, you know quite a bit of time it will lot of digression maybe at some other point we will discuss otherwise you will be discussing this in the other course uh, experimental techniques for. Uh, corrosion there you might discuss in details just note down that or we can discuss of the class ok 
it is it is a big subject by itself ok. Let me let me go back to this equation again and see what it really means actually ok. I go back to this equation otherwise uh, let me let me a uh, put this equation here. Let us look at the equation one more time i is equal to i car exponential e applied minus e car beta a minus exponential minus e applied minus e car beta c. Let us look at this equation now. Let me just put another condition right e applied <laughs> minus e car is very small. So, what does it mean eta over voltage is very small. So, what do you think will happen you guys are you know experts in mathematics right if if uh, this is small it could be either positive or negative whatever it is very small what happens. So, you have a series right right. So, this can be written as i is equal to i car 1 plus car beta I can keep having the series right and I can have this then I have minus of and what happens 1 minus Square not goes right like is not it goes like that am I right. So, what will happen now if I make this is uh, uh, ok delta ok now what I do then is equal to i i car delta e by Eta plus delta e beta c. Am I right? Can also be i. So when I put a see when I have a delta e, uh, what will happen to this? Uh, this i also becomes delta i upon delta e is equal to i car 1 by beta a beta c. What is uh, i by e generally r right ok. So, is equal to 1 by uh, Is 
is it right? Look at the now the relation between between uh, uh, between E and I are linear now. Look at this. this is this a linear relationship or not? And this is called as is called as Stern Gurry equations. Now, so what is beta a beta c? They are all constants, ok. These are constants and r and i, I mean i car are interrelated to each other, ok. So, this is another way of determining the i car value, ok. So, how to do this here? How does it work? It works this way. This is called as linear polarization technique. Right. One second. No? Sorry, oops. Yeah. Please notice here we have plotted not on the log scale, we have plotted in simply linear scale, linear current, linear voltage and and uh, you see that there is a region what is this place? It is over voltage is 0 here right, eta is equal to 0 here, I alt is, is equal to 0 here right. So, origin goes through an origin here ok and of course, here it becomes exponential and it becomes exponential and uh, that is how the equation is valid. Now, the bottle warmer equation is valid all through please look at if you use the bottle warmer equation it is valid everywhere the Tafel equation is valid here, here the Stengary equation is valid here because they are all special case of the war voltage ok. So, the slope of that is what ok this is what gives you what is slope is equal to And this is way supposed to go, the way it should go, the way it goes here. Now, why do you use a linear polarization technique as compared to Tafel technique? Okay. Let us go to the um, now uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each technique? Okay. Merits. Demerits. Tafel ok can get so many parameters ok is, is, is independent is
Okay. What is the demerit? It is a destructive test. If I do for if, if I want to follow the corrosion rate with the time, so sometimes the metals may not corrode the same way, you know, with the time the corrosion rate may increase or decrease. You cannot use a tough slope because once you polarize the metal corrodes, the surface is getting destroyed, the destructive technique, right. We go to linear polarization. It is non destructive. Why? We apply only a few millivolts. The range is in the range of 5 20 millivolts you apply, it is plus or minus 5 to 20 millivolts you apply actually. So, the corrosion is so small, the sample is not really changing its characteristics, it is a non destructive technique. What is the demerit? The demerit is you need sample slopes. One more I just mentioned I am not going to discuss too much and cannot be used in highly resistive environment. What I mean the conductivity of the electrolyte is very small you will not get it ok. Again, I will not discuss. It required some other background. Okay, so for the time being, it is sufficient to understand and be aware that linear polarization cannot be used in some conditions. I am sure, of course, the next course you are taking electrochemical techniques. There, these things will be discussed more in details. Okay, so. Uh, I think we have discussed so far the relation between experimentally obtainable polarization data and how you can use that to determine the, the electrochemical parameters like corrosion current density, E car values, exchange current densities, Tafel slopes and all this like that we can we can able to get this. And I also it is necessary to connect them to events diagram because you need to get a clear picture about what are the mechanisms are happening. So, that we have done it. We also seen that they are related to the the mother equation we call it the mother equation is a Butler Volmer equations. We have not derived that those who are interested you can read the Buchanan and or maybe you read the, um, the Bakris and Reddy book, uh, they are very nice uh, you know derivations uh, are given there. But uh, you know that if you know that the table equation and what are the significance of that, you can see how from that equation the Tafel relationship emerges from that equation how the strain gray equation emerges and uh, the merit and demerit of these uh, equations. See the point again is clear, they are special case of butler warmer equation that means, the electrochemical data should be properly interpreted, you cannot diverse that from the Tafel relationship or the strain gray because there are certain regions they are applicable certain regions they are not applicable. So, then only you can able to get a proper data otherwise you get some some I car value we may not really know whether it has any relevance at all. 
ok. With this I think we will finish the discussion related to uh, ICAR, ICAR other electrochemical parameters and uh, ok.